What's going on guys, I'm Noam Player here and today once again we're going to be running up a bunch more Destiny 2 related topics. So a very big topic is that there does appear to be some kind of secret on Mars related to Rasputin and it's looking very similar to the Outbreak Prime quest. You guys probably remember the ton of secret codes and puzzles that led to the exotic. It was by far one of the most complicated and cryptic ways to get an exotic and it was amazing. Probably the best thing that Bungie have ever done in terms of quests and it looks like something similar is happening in this expansion. Obviously not surprising because it is a Warmind DLC. So a few things have been found that I wanted to show them to you guys and on top of that a bunch of new loot rewards and things Bungie have been announcing so pretty important bits of info you guys should probably know about so of course we've got a lot to get through today inside this video hope you'll enjoy it and if you want to support this channel then don't forget to hit the thumbs up button down below so without further ado let's jump into it right so mystery number one we're going to take a look at this big Rasputin code the symbols and a bunch of weird things going on so we're here in the Rasputin mind lab area obviously the giant cube on Mars that is this area on the map if you don't know so we're going to head up towards Rasputin Rasputin. Also, saw a few of you guys ask me how do you actually get this door to open in patrol because it's not normally open. It's pretty simple. Just kill all the enemies in this entire area. So upstairs, the middle floor, and the bottom floor as well. Kill every single one of those hive enemies and the door will turn blue and you can actually go through it. So if we go through the doors, we're going to head to the main actual Rasputin mind core thing. Obviously, that is his kind of brain in there where you can't use your weapon. But actually, just behind us, if you look on this wall, there's a very interesting little symbol drawn here. And obviously, being next to Rasputin here is a pretty important symbol. So of course, here is the main symbol, the main logo of Rasputin. Rasputin, the war mind. In the middle of that, you can see what looks like a keyhole. And then coming out from that symbol, we have three keys with symbols inside the little holes of the keys. And then here you got a diamond with a rectangle and a bunch of lines in it, which links to another diamond with dots in it. And then it ends over here, which you guys probably recognize is the kind of ghost symbol. So it's possible that all these are locations on Mars. Maybe you have to kind of do something where each of these keys are, maybe figure out where the symbol is go to there and then do a thing, activate something. Not sure what these interlinking diamonds could represent, and obviously the ghost symbols there as well. But the most obvious thing is there is a keyhole in the middle of the Rasputin symbol, and of course three keys are down here. Now again, like I said, a lot of these symbols can actually be found around Mars. There's a few of them dotted around the place, but this symbol right here is pretty important. I'm going to show you a few areas where this actually pops up. So again, that's a rectangle with three lines inside it. And also remember this symbol right here, because I'm going to show you another location where this symbol does appear on a few monitors. So you can see it's a pattern of the two kind of black outlines bars and also two filled out bars in the middle. So if we actually go right outside Rasputin, we can start to see a few of these symbols and where they might appear. But literally just here behind Rasputin, you can see this monitor and it has that same symbol, which is the rectangle with three lines in it. I'll put it on screen so you can see, but this of course is the same symbol that was inside the diamond that linked to the other diamond. But this is to be expected with Bungie. We can see obviously ones and zeros, which is binary. It's very possible all this decodes into something. There's also of course a string of numbers here. Maybe they decode something. And you might think this symbol is normal Normal, but it's actually not on every single monitor. So if we head just behind us, you can see this monitor doesn't have that symbol. So you can see this is what most monitors look like. Then if we go further upstairs, there should be a few more. So you can see these two. Again, there's no symbol on this one. It's just a standard layout. And even over to the right, you can see this monitor again. No symbol is a standard monitor. So this monitor over here does appear to be something different. And there's a reason it has that symbol on, obviously. It also appears to be one of the few monitors with this string of numbers. So I'm sure they mean something. So you get the idea. We all know Bungie are very good at making very cryptic secrets. Also, this monitor, again, is the same standard layout. But then the next thing I want to show you is inside of this room right here, which obviously looks very important. But as you can see, there are a few monitors in this room as well. Most of them are the standard layout. But again, this one actually has a different symbol. So remember the second icon that I pointed out to you, the very first key, this is the same icon inside the first key that appears. So you can see it's the empty bar, the filled out one, empty, filled out, and empty again. But again, this monitor with a special symbol on it, it does appear to have some kind of code written on it. So I'm sure these letters and numbers decode into a word. It looks like a sentence. These backslashes normally represent kind of a break in a word, and this enter is kind of like a new line. But yeah, I haven't even scratched the surface yet. Obviously, there are going to be a ton of weird walls and symbols and monitors on Mars. There is also a console here, which you can activate, which turns on a bit of lore, basically. But again, the monitors behind don't appear to have anything interesting on them. This console definitely looks like a terminal where you'd do something, like you'd have to hold square on it. But again, these all have numbers and code on them, so there's lots to be discovered. So moving on, I did also want to mention this area around here and something that could be related to the Black Spindle, according to a lot of people. So of course, that is the area where you first land down on Mars, and that is towards the Glacial Drift area. But if you run up here and then take a left and go back towards this place, there's a lot of very weird looking doors around here, but this door 
of course, is locked by three Hive Runes. Now, it is important to note you do head down here during the strike against Nocris. So in the campaign and the strike, you do go down here. That is the main purpose of this area. But of course, in patrol, this area is locked off. You can't go here because these three Hive Runes. So if you look on the map, you can see this area goes on quite a lot further. There's a lot of deep tunnels here. It's called the Penumbral Depths. So some of you guys probably remember on Tanix's ship on the moon, you'd head down the main route, which is basically through a door, and then you'd head to one of the main rooms. But then behind you and to the left, the same layout as here, there was a big door locked by three runes. So this is the same layout, and it could be a coincidence or it could be again related to Black Spindle. Obviously, with Bungie returning the weapon, you would expect them to do it in a pretty similar way, and this could be a nod to that. Or maybe this is simply the strike area that's locked off. You can't actually go here in patrol. So it could be either way. Maybe there is some kind of meditation one day or some kind of special quest there's time gates and eventually you can go through here but especially seeing as the black spindle is a hive weapon obviously we know bungie love to reuse areas for multiple pieces of content so again that area is pretty unused and it would make sense for them to have it down there but yeah let me know down below do you think this is just a strike area and nothing more or do you think there's some kind of way to unlock this and get the black spindle from this now if you don't know if you're wondering why i'm actually talking about a black spindle in destiny 2 i'll give a quick recap but of course every weapon in destiny 2 now has a masterwork version and those have masterwork catalysts with icons like these only about half the masterwork works are actually available right now but the other half i'm guessing are coming later i also covered all the masterwork bonuses in yesterday's video of course all of these exotics have masterwork versions with these little icons now among them inside the game files there was also found this icon which obviously is the black spindle there's no way there's any other weapon it's not a leftover file from destiny 1 there's no mistake this is 100 the black spindle obviously the weapon is completely classified inside the database that's why we can't see it so it's just going to be one of the many items inside the game which is marked keep it secret keep it safe so there's nothing told about it now we're just in a similar spot to destiny 1 we've got to figure out how to get it of course when these things are found i'll make videos and let you guys know and i'll put a link down below in the description of a thread with all the details of this massive secret there are loads of people on there posting information and trying to figure it out so if you guys want to see this info for yourself or try and contribute and help solve this mystery then of course you can check it out in the description so let's talk about a bunch of new loot that's been added to the game for trials the raid faction rally all that stuff so these are obviously the two main weapons missing from the leviathan set so the sidearm is called last of the legion which is in the adaptive frame and it's got the choice of zen moment or ambition assassin and the final perk is full auto so it seems pretty good obviously full auto is a decent perk for sidearms the fusion rifle is called the emperor's envy which is in the precision frame probably one of the best archetypes of fusion rifles to be honest and this one has a choice of moving target or ambitious assassin and the final perk is rampage unfortunately this weapon isn't actually that good i compared it to the main ingredient which is my favorite fusion and probably one of the best in the game and it's also in the precision archetype so this weapon the raid version actually has less range less stability less handling and less aim assist Obviously, the weapon looks and I'm sure sounds amazing, like all the Leviathan weapons, but I thought you guys would want to know how it stacks up to other weapons in the game. There are also three emblems, so Spire Star tracks your normal encounters, Prestige, and also Power Conduit chest opens. There's also Grind Underfoot, which is only found in chests inside the raid layer, and Together for Glory, which is only found inside the Conduit chest in the Spire of Stars raid. And then there is also a new shader called Callus's Shadow, which seems to be kind of black, white, gold, and silver. Bungie did release a teaser trailer for this raid layer, but thankfully, there are no spoilers, zero spoilers at all no gameplay i mean for the first raid layer they pretty much spoiled what the entire inside room looks like so i'm glad they didn't do it this time all it is is text on screen saying this vestige of my power will be your key to the wonders of the leviathan this is going to be the end of the story of the leviathan probably the last time we set foot on there in terms of a new activity and of course the raid layer does go live at 10 a.m pacific or 6 p.m uk time the usual event launch time and i'm gonna be live streaming right here on my youtube channel so make sure you stop by bungie did also announce and show off a preview of the trials season 3 rewards which also does go live at the same time as the raid layer so season three begins so we've got an smg called motion to suppress this is in the lightweight frame and has zen moment as main perk there is motion to compel which is a scout rifle in the high impact frame and this one has kill clip as a final perk and then motion to vacate which is a shotgun in the lightweight frame with the final perk of opening shot there's also a new shader called cognition of the nine and finally for the first time in trials of the nine we have some new accessory items so you've got a ghost shell also a ship and a sparrow i'm assuming these will just be random drops at the end of games similar to Destiny 1. But yeah, those are the new rewards of Trials in Season 3. Now there's also a bunch of loot from Iron Banner and Faction Rally which I want to look at. Firstly, with Iron Banner, there's a few weapons that I guess were missing and now they've been filled out. But a lot of these guns have really weird designs. So we have a rocket launcher for Iron Banner, 
called the Shining Sphere. This one is adaptive with pulse monitor. There is a Vice auto rifle with auto loading holster and high caliber rounds or extender mag. There's an SMG called the Multimax CCX with dynamic sway reduction in the lightweight frame. And finally, a sidearm called the Allied Demand in the adaptive frame with auto loading holster. I mean, all those weapons just seem super average. Obviously, they're reskins again, but the perks just don't seem fantastic at all. I'm not sure what's going on with these Iron Banner weapons. I mean, they used to be in Destiny 1, some of the best crucible weapons in the entire game. Unfortunately, it doesn't get much better and this may be why faction rally has been put on hold but there's three new weapons for each faction so for dead orbit we have the anella which is a sniper in the rapid fire frame the last perk is opening shot the designs of these are super weird you've got like a green theme on the dead orbit weapons for some reason but you can obviously see the dead orbit logo so it's definitely from them there's a hand cannon called the agamid which is in the aggressive frame with rampage so it seems decent the basilisk or basilisk which is a rapid fire shotgun the final perk again auto loading holster this one doesn't have an image for some reason but a lot of these are kind of temporary i'm guessing into new monarchy even with a color scheme you can see the bison hander this is precision with ambitious assassin and high cows seems pretty good actually the broadsword is a rocket launcher in the adaptive frame with again auto loading holster our favorite perk there's a giant seven which is a pulse rifle this one is adaptive with zen moment appended mag or ricochet rounds and then into future war cult we have the vision which is a sidearm in the adaptive frame accurized rounds or appended mag and the final perk is kill clip that actually seems like a really good sidearm there's a rocket called the pit launcher which i'm guessing is temporary because it's a green weapon you can see this is aggressive and also the rampage a rocket launcher with the rampage perk is super weird but it may be temporary and the final future war cut weapon is called the magnum shepherd a pulse rifle in the adaptive frame with high impact reserves an alloy mag or extended mag so like i said faction rally is basically being worked on and overhauled until i believe summer so i'm not even sure if these weapons are going to make it into the game but they do have the warmind logo on them so maybe but of course these are all we've seen so far and of course iron banner isn't cancelled that is going to be around in a few weeks of course with those four weapons i showed off so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video as always if you did and if you want to support this channel then leaving a like rating down below would be awesome of course i'm working on more videos coming out soon and later today i'm going to live stream the raid layer spite of stars so of course check back right here the second the raid launches i'll be live on my channel i made a video talking about a weapon that bungie actually removed inside of the game also every single exotic masterwork bonus and perk and even the sleeper simulants so click this image if you want to watch it but of course i appreciate your watching and your support and i'll see you all very soon on this channel for a raid layer stream